It's in the field radio, y'all. Everything's real in the field. On 91.3 FM, WVKR. Welcome to In The Field Radio. I'm Erin Boogie. I'm here with Miss Lady D. What's going on? I'm not really awake right now. Good morning. <laughs> no, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> it's been a it's been a long, eventful, I guess, time period actually since we've last recorded for the show together. Yeah, in a good way, definitely in a good way. What were you doing? Well, this morning I went to Brooklyn, and I had connected with somebody during the pandemic. Totally forgot about it because you know, like. The pandemic shifted into online so I was like doing all these like online like Q&A's and panels and stuff like that and connecting with a lot of people and then of course the world opened back up and everyone forgot each other so Aaliyah had reached out to me and she had booked a studio space she's in town for the weekend and she was having her herself and her singer songwriter um, that she works with interviewed and the interviewer canceled so she reached out to me to interview them and I thought that was dope it's not something it's definitely something outside my comfort zone not something I've done before just on the fly like that and with limited information which she did on purpose that way it would be more of like an organic um, conversation instead of like a who do you want to work with in the future type like you know um, type interview and uh, I had to be in Brooklyn at seven in the morning I am not awake I am a zombie Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Did you drive or take the train? No, I drove because if I had taken the train, first of all, I don't even know if trains leave from Poughkeepsie that early because like on a Sunday cuz I've never I typically don't do anything that early. I'm I'm like a not before noon person, so it was a, it was a lot in general. Yeah. But, but to be honest, um the spot, the studio in Brooklyn was really cute. It's like a little production studio and it's like a place you rent and there's no one there so it's like you just like punch in the code go inside do your thing and leave it's kind of like an airbnb of studios i like this oh and it was so the place was really cute so and they have all the lighting and stuff there for you and they have like a little couch and stuff and then you move everything how you want it you do what you do and then you get out so um the spot was actually really easy to get to and Clearly, at 5 a.m. when I got on the road, there was zero traffic. For the most part, I was the only car on the road, so I was able to get down. I got there in an hour and a half. Isn't that great? I love, what? that's why I love traveling in, in early in the morning to the city. Like, I'm like, this has to happen before 12. Yeah, and after 12, I'm like, somebody else has to drive, and it's got to be a train conductor, and then I'm just going to sleep on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I did. I went down... Oh, so I went down on Wednesday for Fabio Foreign's single release and I got back on the train and all of a sudden it was like mad stops later and I was like, oh my God, I just got on this train and fell asleep. Oh, so you fell asleep on the train. Oh yeah, like instantly. It was like the train rolled out of Grand Central and then I was like in Croton. Fabio's single release party looked really lit. That's so fun to have a party at a basketball game. Yo, so it was a two-part party. I'm not going to lie to you. So the basketball game was just kind of like a meet and greet. And I had never been to an NBA game before. I couldn't believe that. Yo, so I go to sporting events a lot, but like always baseball. You know what I mean? Ah. And I've always wanted to go to an NBA game. It's just never worked out that it's happened so when they were like oh like the you know he's doing a press meet and greet in a suite at Barclays Center I was like oh what time what time I gotta be there because like this is like the perfect opportunity for me to like be able to like get some work in and go see this NBA game and it was the Nets and Knicks and it was the worst game ever they blew the Nets blew the Knicks out so bad like no one even paid attention to the game because you know you're in this suite with like 20 other people and the game is you know clearly a blowout so no one was paying attention to the game but you want to know what was really cool Mayno did the halftime show Ooh, that was yeah. a very new york game 
like a super. It was so funny, and like Fab was sitting on the at the floor on the floor seat, so it was like it felt like a very Brooklyn game. Yeah. And then uh, the release party was at Forty Two Door in Midtown, and it was the worst venue I've ever been to. So I told them that I was gonna slam them. So now I have to live up to my word. Yo, this is not <laughs> the first time that you've had like a weird venue thing at like a label, like a, you know, a poppin' artist release party. You know what though? Like the other like, one where they put everybody out. And I'm like, huh? Well, that's kind of what happened here, except they wouldn't let anyone in. And then when they finally, they wanted to charge us to get in, which first of all, we're on the list to get in. We came with the artist. Like, how are you going to ask us for money at the door? And then we got inside and the place was empty. Like, you should be wanting people to come in here and buy your drinks. Right. Like, how Like how are you staying open if you aren't letting people in the door? So the whole situation was really weird. Um, it's right next to a police station. So there was cops all down the block. That was uncomfortable. And then 50 <laughs> Cent was having an event next door. And so, like, 50 Cent's event was, like, absurd like people trying to get in and stuff so um it was just that part of it it was like the game was great everybody i met a lot of really cool people from a lot of different publications like fabio was great his single's awesome i've actually been bumping it on repeat one on three if you haven't heard it yet run and go hear it because i it's mean they can a, hear it tonight a thousand percent but it's funny because the song is about jumping somebody, but the beat is like really <laughs> upbeat, and like Fabio's really upbeat, and so you're like, yeah, and then it, like, but you're like, oh man, we're gonna go jump people. <laughs> yes, so it's, like, <laughs> it's like weird because you're like super hype about going to jump people, and that's not even like what's happening. Like you're sitting in your living room, just mad hype. Oh no. <laughs> yes, and I'm not typically a drill person. So I was, I was like, like Fabio's a little different though. He's not really just like that straight, like, um, you know, young kid coming out of Brooklyn screaming gang, gang, gang. Like his, his music has different elements to it. So, but I was like, I, you know, I, I hope this is not just like a straight drill song, like in your face drill. And it, it's not, it's a really dope single. Um, I've definitely listened to it a million times since it dropped. So. No. You're welcome for all those streams, Fabi. Well, and, especially well, since you're, you know, going through this thing with Tim McQueen and then you hit me up like, yo, I'm going to body I, this person. So this is probably <laughs> not the song for you to be hearing. You know what? Now that if I, if, but when I ride out, like that's what I'm throwing on. It used to be like Annie Up or whatever. <laughs> I feel like this is the new Annie Up. Ooh. And, but it's so funny too because like I had never met Fabi before this and I swear to God like the nicest individual ever like he was like he made sure that he introduced himself to everybody he was interacting with everybody like thanking everyone for coming out and then he drops this single and it's about jumping people and I was like okay you know what it it, it goes down for the best of us I think I'm no. typically nice but if you have to ride out you have to ride out just like you you're typically nice but whoo if you get on the wrong side, it, it has to go down like that. But I'll tell you, like, just out of high school, I remember going to jump somebody with Andy up on. And, like, now I can picture me going to jump somebody with one on three on. I feel <sighs> like it's like that new anthem. The thing is, when I saw that the single was called one on three and then they they were at the basketball game, I was like, oh, OK, basketball metaphor even though that's that's not what should be happening but whatever and it's, I really thought it was it's gonna totally be a song different about, i thought it was going to be a song about him with three ladies boy was i in for the surprise what? of my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah like basketball sexual like one on three like yeah and no no not at all <laughs> that's funny it was yeah it was definitely um like unex unexpected but also like i unexpectedly enjoyed it way more than i thought i was because you know sometimes too like when you um are reviewing a single or or something like you you don't always connect with it because it's not something you would you're like going out and seeking yourself so then when it ends up being something that i'm like into then i'm super pleasantly surprised and that's happened to us i think quite a few times 
Yeah, like before I um, go through the music, right? I have to, I do this thing where I kind of like reset my ears. So like people will see me listening to heavy metal, rock, country, like something completely different than what I'm about to listen to. Yeah. And so I can like go in with like an open mind, not comparing it to anything that I that I chose to be listening to. And that's a hard, hard thing to go through the music too, because it you're getting so much different sound and input yeah. coming at you at and one you time. You really have to be like objective. <laughs> yeah. And um that's why I kind of take that seriously then when people, you know, they they start these podcasts or whatever and they, they want to determine who's hot and who's not and things like that. And like, dude, it's really hard because there's different types of music in the same genre. And you really have to listen to it based on the intent on of the creator. And, you know, if people who listen to that type of music would like it, not necessarily do, is it your favorite song? Like, did they yeah, do a good job at what they were trying to accomplish? I think when when i used to listen to the music i was looking more for is this radio ready is it mixed is it something that will fit um and i think we've evolved in this show to not just um look for those elements but also does it fit into this episode so we're not cramming like 50 different sounds in an episode but you're you're getting an eclectic mix of music but it all fits together yeah, I love when I put it together where I'm like, okay, this was a drill song, and then maybe I'll just go into like a rhythmic rap song, and then here's an R&B, and then here's like a Jay Swish's record after that, and then we'll ease back into this over here. Like, I really Jay try Swishes. not to, to uh, shock the listener. Yeah, no, and I think that makes a big difference for a listener. Um, do you ever think, because, okay, so Fabio Florent, and then Jay Swishes. Do you think that they could do a song together? Yeah, why not? Could you imagine Jay Swishes on the hook? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be cute? Yes. I want to see him collab with more people. You know, I want him to collab with Callie Rose. And that's like my own selfish. This is my own Oh, my selfish. God. Yes. It's like my own selfish like viewpoint. But I just, I, I really... I met him at um, the introduction uh, introduction dinner that he had for the last EP. And, you know, sometimes like when you're going into these introductory dinners, like you've never heard of the person before and you're really just getting a taste of their music, um, you know, right before you meet them. And with him, just listening to his story, he's just so inspiring that it really stuck with me. Like he doesn't have like your typical story and... Um, his music too coming out of Brooklyn is not like, you know, now everybody's just doing drill and he's not afraid to be different. And that's what I really like about him. And he can say who inspires him. And then you can listen to the music and you're not like, this is a carbon copy. Like, no. Yeah. You can no, tell that it's like, it okay. Way. Yeah. So that's the interview we got for you guys tonight. It's, it's very, I mean, not only his story, but like his, he dropped some gems. Like I'd put bookmarks yes. on it. So I'll yes. drop the clips from for some of the uh, gems he, he dropped for people who have a short attention span. And, um, <laughs> and they were just me. really good. He strikes me as like an old soul. He's a super wise individual and I super appreciated some of the things that he dropped during this interview. Yeah. Um, Can't say enough good things. For real. We'll get into the interview and we'll be back. It's your girl Vina Love and you're listening to In The Field Radio. Hey, are you thinking about starting your own podcast? Well, you can stop overthinking it because the hardest part is actually getting started. And that's where Buzzsprout comes in. Buzzsprout makes it easy to launch your podcast and has already helped over 100,000 people just like you start and grow their own podcast. With Buzzsprout, you can have your show listed on all major platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. You'll get a great looking podcast website. 
audio players you can embed on other websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening, tools to promote your episodes, and more. Stop waiting. Start your own podcast today and get a $20 Amazon gift card. All you have to do is click the link in the show notes below. This lets Buzzsprout know we sent you and it helps support our show. Welcome back to In The Field Radio. I'm Aaron Boogie and I'm here with Jay Swishes. Thank you for having me. No, I'm super excited. I think you're um, such a dope individual and you make such great music that I feel super privileged to have you on our platform. Likewise, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start all the way back in the beginning, right? Because our listeners probably aren't super familiar with who you are yet. And this is a good time for them Mm -hmm. to get to know you. So let's start all the way back in the beginning. Um, What was the young Jay Swishes like? Um, Young Jay Swishes was outside, very athletic. You know, I used I love sports. I love playing basketball. I love, you know, like that was really my my um my first passion my first love like was was really basketball that's actually how i got my name um swish i just added the es at the end when i started making music but basketball was my first love but also it was very difficult growing up where i was at in brownsville because it's just a lot a lot of violence a lot of you know it's like any other battle like in chicago and other places like it's just very, it's like a rough neighborhood you really got to know how to maneuver and it's like really just trying to survive really and you were originally born in canada i was but most of my um me growing into a man and stuff like that like i mostly grew up out here but yes i was born in ontario canada so how old were you when you moved to the states um i was like what like not like 10 like around there like 10 Okay, here, so yeah. you spent a decent amount of time in Canada before yeah. coming here. I would say that um, Canada, like, you know, I really started being outside when I came out here. But what I can remember, though, from Canada is that is definitely that Canada has a very heavy West Indian population. I'm also West Indian. Like, my parents mm-hmm. came from Grenada to Canada and then came came here. But they're very West Indian populated. It's a lot of West Indian culture out there. So like the food and stuff like that is very, even the slang, like it's, it's, it's a lot of West Indian culture out there, which I, which I really love. And it's very clean out there. Canada's super clean. What was the uh, culture shock like going from there to Brownsville? In Brownsville, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's not a lot going on. It's, it's, it's poverty and it's just, way more action if in a certain terms than where I was at in Canada. Like I really had to um get a grip of how I'm gonna maneuver my like my life out here in a in a certain sense. Like it's a way that you when once you start being outside in Brownsville, you start knowing how to move if you're smart. You went from basketball and then music took over. Was there like a defining moment? Like did something happen and it was like, oh so, this is what I'm doing now. So basically, I fell in love with basketball because me and my pops, we don't really have a relationship. And that made me playing basketball made me close to him because he he loved that I played basketball. And I was and it turned out that I was really good at it. And he's seen that. So I'm like, oh, I'm getting attention from my pops. So I just kept doing it, kept doing it. I went super hard at it. But as I got older in high school, I'm like, yo, I got to live my life for me, not for like anybody else, not even my parents. So I'm just like, I don't really have the the drive or the love to go that hard to really be, to really go to the NBA or really make it big. And it, it requires a certain amount of dedication that I wasn't willing to give. I realized that music is where my heart is at. So I stopped, I stopped playing. I focused on music after I graduated high school. And at what point you you lost your mother young too, and you were estranged from your father for a while. Is your relationship with him any better? Um, I would say it's fairly the same. Yeah, I would say it's fairly the same. We don't really have a relationship like that. So I lost my mother right before I went to high school. So my middle school graduation that summer, she died. And then I went to high school. It was a period of time that I was also homeless as well. Yeah, I remember when I first met you, you had told that story and it made it was such an impact because you have such a mature sound and such a mature aura about you. Like what kept you going during that struggle? Well, I have a little brother that I really 
I really love, you know, so. And one of my, one of the things my mom told me right before she died was to always look out for my little brother. So everything that I do, I think about him. So me and my brother, um, he has Down syndrome. I think about him a lot. So it's like, I can't, it was just a driving factor for me to keep pushing, even though it was, it was very rough. It was times where like I would go and sleep and hope that a bullet just take me so to take me out of the the misery and the stress that I was feeling like I used to pray that I just I would die that's so heavy especially at your age or especially yeah. at that age this might be the yeah, second so. time we cry on in the field radio I was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> no my heart really goes out to you for that um and I know that's something that that Deb can relate to as well so it definitely it, it hits us close to home um mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you did for your mental health during that time? Um, I definitely was just writing music. Like I would get like, you know, pieces of paper and like write down my thoughts and write down lyrics and stuff like that. Like, cause that was my um, like my only way of like releasing what I needed to release. Cause I'm not much of a talker. Like I don't really like talking to people about my problems and stuff. I usually do it in the music or like if you ask me in an interview or something like that, but I really don't talk about my problems to anybody. It's just not my, not in my character. I don't know why it's just hard for me to do. Music was really my, like lyrics and just writing was really my outlet. Yeah, we hear that a lot from artists too, that they channel their pain into their writing. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, it was times where like I would pray and then I stopped praying because I felt like God wasn't hearing me. Because you're, you sure. come across as such an inspiring person when you talk about it. And I felt like that was really important for our listeners to, to hear that from you. Yeah, for sure. Um. When did you start taking music seriously? Like, what was that like? Like, what, um, what pushed you to take it seriously? So when I started, because, you know, to do music, you need money. So once I started, like, you know, I was hustling and stuff like that, trying to trying to get funds, because I always said that anything that I do, I want to do it to the best of my ability. So the studios, I know the type of quality studios I want to go to. I know the type of how I want my sound to be. So because... I want to make sure that I represent myself in the, in the best way possible. So I was, you know, I was hustling on the side and I was working as well, trying to get the funds to, to invest in myself because I wasn't going to wait on nobody to invest in me. You know, I'm my first believer. So I did that. And then in 2018, it was the right time for me to, um, um, you know, it was a good time. So that's when I really started uh, um, investing in myself and taking it seriously and also um, there's this there's this person and his name is Johnny Cashflow. He's part of One Umbrella, which is with Tory Lanez. He started like uh, bringing me around and like showing me the game, and I started being around Tory and stuff like that because of him. So he was he was one of the few um, one of the people in the beginning that believed in me. But I eventually branched off and started doing my own thing separate from him. And you definitely give me Tory vibes too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're like uh, New York's version, like minus the court cases of, <laughs> of Tory Lane, like in a good way. Like, because sometimes when you yeah. when you compare somebody to another artist, like it's not necessarily like the like you want to be different. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but um, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I I always say that um, when people ask me what artists inspire me. Tory Lanez is my favorite artist and I am inspired by him, him and Drake. I really I heard the Tory Lanez a lot on the I'm Him EP. Mm -hmm. So, but when I listened to Good Company, which is the single coming out tomorrow with Cranium and Lira Veli, uh, mm -hmm. it was different vibe for me. Yeah, definitely. You know, because that's just me getting, you know, trying to bring some of my roots and some of my West Indian flavor to my, to my sound and, you know, just giving people an insight on that, that I could make those type of songs as well. But it's, but it's still being... Cranium on the track is like, so yeah, crazy. we're not gonna gloss over that. Yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's one thing we do so, like to do on this show is uh drop names. So how how tell us how did how so did that how, how, so how that came about was um Cranium heard the record. By the way, the original song is was already out on YouTube and it's about to hit a million views on YouTube. Um so he heard the record through um uh this person, his name is Ron, he works at he works at Def Jam and Cranium ended up wanting to be on the record and that's how that really came about through um Ron from Def Jam. Wow. Shout out Ron from Jeff Def Jam. That record is such Fun record. I, when I was listening to it before, I was dancing around the bedroom. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, you know what's so funny? When I went to um South by Southwest um early on in the year, I was I would perform that record. I would just see like all different demographics dancing to the record. Like it's just it's just so cool to see. Like it's not just you know not one demographic, but just everybody. It was crazy. It was a good feeling. And this is before Cranium was on the record. This is the original. The original. Mm -hmm. I think I like that about Drake's music like people they get upset about his success mm -hmm. and I'm like because everybody can listen to the song mm -hmm. so he right. can reach more people it, it's okay that your you know music speaks to a certain demographic or what have you but you're not gonna win the same awards because everybody can't enjoy it so <laughs> um yeah, that's really cool that you appreciate that being able to reach like everyone no definitely because my perp like where i where i see myself in the direction that i want to go is that i really want to be a seasoned career artist not a moment artist like i don't want to just have a moment i want to have an actual career where like people's kids 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 is going to know me and listen to my record like the same thing with Drake and other big artists. They make those records that's timeless. I want to make timeless music. So I'm, I put an intentional effort into my songs when I'm creating them for that aspect of things. We love when artists come up here and say things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel any kind of pressure being like the, you know, R&B, like, like have those elements and stuff and versus like especially coming out of brooklyn with the drill scene so heavy like do you ever feel pressure to get into that or anything? um no nah, i feel no pressure at all because nobody where i'm from is doing what i'm doing so i know that i'm talented so it's like i don't really feel like i'm com competing with anybody from where i'm from because they're not doing what i do they're not making the records that i make and shout out to them respectfully but they're just not doing what i'm doing i love that i feel like drill is taking over i feel like we're not getting as much variety anymore out of new york yeah i purposely did not want to be a drill artist because me personally i don't really i listen to drill like when i'm with my homies and stuff like that of course i like the sound but it's not the music that i normally listen to and really listen to and it's not the artist that i that i want to be like you know who are you listening to i listen to a lot of uh tori Drake. Um, I listen to a lot of reggae as well, you know. So I, I'm, I'm really one thing about me. I'm really tapped in. Like I'm in tune with a lot of stuff. Like I listen to a lot of different variety of music. Like I listen to Bad Bunny. I listen to Annuel. I listen to um, Burner Boy. Burner Boy is one of the artists that I'm listening to. He's really dope. Like I listen to everything. I try to make sure that I'm tapped in to to all the talented artists that I think is really really dope. Because I look at, to be honest, I look at them. I look at them as competition in my head. I'm not, even though I'm not at that level yet, in my head, I'm not competing with the people that's on the same level as me because I'm trying to make my records. If I was to, if they was to put Burner Boy's record or Drake's record or Tory's record in the same rotation as my record, is my record going to match up and sound like it's supposed to be there? So that's where I listen, I listen and I and I go back in the lab and I'm like, got to match up. So that's where my effort comes in as well. So I, I make sure that I'm tapped into all the artists that I find is dope in any genre because I listen to all genres. All genres. I was my one of my fun questions is um, if someone handed you the aux and you like picked the most uh, like surprising song mm -hmm. where people are like, you listening to this song? Like, what song is that for you? <laughs> I, I really like I also like the underground scene you know like that that Playboy Cardi Ken Carson type of type of sound so like when I put on artists like that when I'm with my bros they be like yo what like what is, like what is this like, <laughs> <laughs> like like what is this like because you know it's it's more about it's more about like um playing with your voice and sound more than it's about lyrics and like right. you know, a lot of a lot of my bros, they like they listen to like they like Rod Wave and Drill and stuff like that. So me putting on like a Ken Carson song or or anybody else in the underground, it's kind of like what the like what the hell is this? Let's talk about producers. Mm -hmm. Do you like just find the beats, or did you lock in with anybody? Definitely, definitely locked in with like for um for the first project that I have out and the second one that's that's gonna be on the way um next week 11 11 um i went to atlanta and i locked in with producers so they came to the studio we caught a vibe asked me how i'm feeling shout out to um atl shout out to fat boy beats 
you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of them. I can't name them all, but they know who they are. But yeah, I definitely um, locked in with this and um, in the studio with producers for these two projects. So none of these beats are from YouTube. Is that is that on purpose? Do you have something against YouTube beats? No, nah, I, I feel don't. like that's lazy. Oh, no, nah, I definitely don't. Because do. of course, you keep going with that. <laughs> no, nah, I definitely don't. Because if to be honest, the good company beat is a YouTube beat. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And and that turned out to be, you know, my um, best records that's doing well. So we're advocates for producers on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I and and, and I do we do good business with the producers too. We don't like even if I cut a beat off of YouTube, we we get in contact with the producer and I actually build a relationship with them from YouTube. Like the good company beat, um, Iano beat, shout out to him, he's dope. We, you know, bought the beat, had did good business and have a relationship with him, you know? So relationships is key as well. That's a fact. That's important. So on the I, I'm Him EP, there is one feature listed, P Right. You have right, more peace. features on the uh, next project, and what's your y'all's relationship like? Yeah, P Wright is um I met P Wright through one of my managers, Panama. Yeah, P Wright is just a just a dope artist, man. I, it's just like yeah, he's definitely on this project as well. You know what I'm saying? He he, he we, we got another song on on um I'm really him. We got another song on there together. Yeah, he's what dope. What can we expect off the new EP? So it takes you for a ride. So I, the best way I can explain this metaphorically is like in the beginning, it's like you in a tunnel and it's just like you can't find the light to get out. Like, you know, it's dark. You feel like there's no way out. And then as it goes, you realize that there is the light at the end of the tunnel and it just keeps going on and on and on. Like it gets brighter and brighter. So it starts from dark to light. And I purposely did that to like, you know, show the transition that things things could get better. You could turn lemons to lemonade. I love that. Yay. Yeah, inspiring individual. The EPs are all part of a trilogy. It definitely is. So the first one was I'm Him. The second one that's coming out is I'm Really Him. And then the third one is going to come out at the top of the new year. And it's going to be called Call Me Nothing But Him. Amazing. I like him, Duncan. That's such a fun song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's also, too, the reason why also that um I named it that, because I really really feel like i'm really him like it's not it's not <laughs> just <really> him. <laughs> like i really do feel like i'm that guy and i want people to feel like that as well especially with mental health you know we all go through mental mental things and i, I want people to wake up in the morning and just look at themselves in the mirror and feel good about themselves like you are one of one there's nobody like you so you should feel good about yourself you should feel like you him her know what i'm saying i love that right so I've really seen you out here grinding between attending all these different events, all the interviews that you've been knocking out lately, um, mm -hmm. dropping new music, uh, constantly got music coming down the pike. Like, what is the reality of the grind of an independent artist? Well, the reality is that you got to be outside. You got to shake hands. You got to build relationships because at the end of the day, you just going in the studio and dropping a song and thinking people is going to listen is not the reality. Like, people have to know who you are. You got to you got to be outside. It just it just is what it is. And that might be from Monday through Sunday, which I've been doing and just building the relationships with the right people. For me, it's not just it's not just about being dope or being good. There's a lot of dope artists that go nowhere. Mm, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying it's like the music is the easy part is everything else. What are some everything of the mistakes else. that you made early on that you would hope that other artists would avoid? I would say certain areas where um i was spending money at on certain things they didn't need to go where where i was spending it for example right i was spending less money on marketing and putting more money into like videos and stuff like that when the marketing is really the big thing you know what i'm saying you got to market the video and market yourself because if you have a dope video and then you don't really have that much money left to do the market. And it's kind of like, I just have a dope video, but is it going to reach the masses where I want it to reach? So I would just say, like, make sure that you allocate in the money in the right places for what you need it for and what's really necessary. What's the best piece of advice that somebody's given you on your journey? To not take advice from everyone. Because, you know, sometimes everybody <laughs> sometimes got advice to give you. Sometimes, you know, everybody got advice to give you and it just be a bunch of BS. So 
you basically got to have a filter in your ears. You take what you feel like, okay, that's dope advice. And then the others, you know, throw that in the trash somewhere or let it go through one ear and come out the other. I love that. I'm going to start saying that to people. <laughs> now I'll get into some more of like the fun questions. Who is your dream collab? If you could collab with anybody, who would it be? Um, my dream collab is definitely Tory. Tory Lanez. You're not afraid to work with him? Because he keeps talking nah. about being blackballed. Nah, not at all. Nah, I'm not afraid to work with him at all. Good music is... Because at the end of the day, yes, Tory is blackballed, but he has a very... Um, very strong fan base like he still do numbers people still yep. check for his music Absolutely. and he's still relevant he's still relevant and if you really think about it what he got going on got nothing to do with me so you get what i'm saying so that's that don't got nothing to do with me we just making a great great record i always feel like uh why do people assume that a lot of celebrities are like good people I guess like they have this world responsibility. I was like, there's a lot of famous people who are like awful human beings. That's but why they're I'm still like rich Mill. and successful. Like <laughs> Meek Mill, I remember they asked him in an interview, like, you know, because that was when he was doing like some of the uh criminal justice reform, like kind of stuff like when he had just got out of jail and you know, they asked him about being a role model and he was like, I am not a role model. Like I could go back to jail tomorrow and I don't want to disappoint people. And I thought that was such like a brutally honest answer. <laughs> 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 but that's, that's what I love. I love about Tory Lanez too, is that, you know, it, despite the fact that he gets no radio play and people don't want to interview or write about him, he's still, you know, number one on Apple charts. One thing at the end of the day, people be forgetting that artists are humans too. We make mistakes. You gotta just, you can't please everybody. That's a fact. <laughs> I think we all have to learn that the hard yeah, way sometimes. Yeah, please. Yeah. Even with music, everybody, I know for a fact, everybody's not going to like my music. This, Drake is the biggest artist in the world. And every trust me, everybody doesn't like Drake's music. Right. What are some goals you have for yourself at this point in your career? Um. Well, one of my goals is to have a very uh, solidified fan base. Like, I really want to build a, a cult following. And I also wanted to dive into other my other passions like um like fashion. Like I'm really into fashion a lot. So I definitely want to get in that bag. I can what would you that. call your fan base? Like how Nikki Nash has like barbs. Like what would your fan base be called? Would you name them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would name them family. Aww. I would just say family. Why do you have to I'm be family. <laughs> family. <laughs> That's, can family I say for that? Sure. Ice Spice, she tweeted the other day about, and she called her fans the Spice Cabinets. And I like almost threw my phone across the room. I thought that was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> so cute. Spice Cabinets. <laughs> yeah, but I would say I might I might end up changing it and really come up with a different name. But for now, I would say family for sure. You know what I'm saying? Well, and does your, um wait, have you created the line already and named it? Your like fashion. Oh, oh, oh! It's um, I'm it's actually in the I'm actually in the process of getting it together. It's called No Landing. No Landing. Oh, I like that. Yeah, the direction that I'm trying to take it is that like I really want it to be a high end brand, like a real fashion line. It's not just it's not gonna be just merch. So basically, what I want to do is that when I drop the first in installment, after that, once once it's once it's sell out, it's never we're gonna come back. So it's a new design the second time. So you basically got to catch it when it drops, otherwise you're not going to get it. Or oh, like seasons. Right, right. I like when they do that. I don't, that always works for me. I'm like, the new season of this is dropping. And yeah, they that's, get how me. Wanna, yeah. that's how I want to do it. <laughs> okay. And then so, like, were you always just, like, fashion growing up? Or you were just like, yo, I I like this. started getting into fashion when I started um, um in high school. I started getting more into fashion. Like, I always like um, was into like how I look. Like, I love looking good because no, when you look good, you feel good. Right. So that's where the passion comes. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna keep it a buck. A lot of people don't know this. It might be funny, <clears throat> but I'm one of those that watch like Project Runway like that. I love that. Yeah. You know, well, so. yeah, because I'm reading the bio and it was like you did sketches. It was like sourcing the material and stuff. And I was like, oh, you do fashion, fashion. Yeah, yeah, that's how much I'm into it, yeah. like material and all of that stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I taught myself how to draw and sketch and stuff as well. Yeah, like I could paint and I could draw. Like I'm just, I don't know. I just always felt. I just was. I realized that I was just always good on the art side of things. Like I'm really just good at art. 
You just create it. That's cool. For sure. Let's see. Is the music business as like cutthroat and scary as people say it is? No, nah, it's definitely cutthroat. You can't be sensitive. And you got to be, I, I'm not going to lie to you, you got to be kind of cutthroat yourself mm-hmm, as well. Right. Or, or, or else you will get run over and left for dead. If you had to get out of the genre you're in, like no hip hop, R and B, none of that, mm-hmm. and had to mm-hmm. go into a completely different genre, where would you, what, what would you do? I would go to Afro pop. As a female fronted radio show, we like to highlight extraordinary women. So, who was a woman that made a major impact on your life? Definitely my mother. Definitely my mother. Like she installed a lot of stuff into me at a very young age. Yeah, I said um, that's why I, I feel like I've been uh, been always been mature. Like then people my age like growing up because she uh she just really played a, a huge impact on my life, huge. So yeah, I even put her on the on the cover art of my um my new EP. Oh my god, I love that. Yeah, the cover art is really dope. So I would say oh. like yeah, she's an she's an extraordinary woman to me. I feel like uh she got taken away from me just too young and too fast because when I really needed her and stuff like that, I just couldn't couldn't go to her. So, that's yeah. what I, like I love the resiliency that you display because I think that's that's such a um I, I I lost a parent myself young and Deb lost her mother young so I, that it's just such a devastating thing to go through um right. but the way that you present yourself and the, like the way that you talk about it and, and the fact that you know like you picked yourself up and, and really like you're self made. I'm trying. I'm still, and I'm still. I'm. I'm not where I want to be at yet. But you know, I'm just every, just trying to fight and push through, and just keep my head on straight. Cause I know, I know what my mother wanted for me. So I'm trying to fulfill that. And I realize that, you know, when things happen to you in life, time doesn't wait for you. Or wait for nobody. People still like life still goes on. Mm-hmm. Whatever happens to you, life still goes on. So it's either like you push through and go through the pace, or like. You let it consume you and there's times where i let it consume me because i'm also human yeah it's just absolutely. like you know trying to dust yourself and, and and come back to it like i was super excited to have you on the show because i think your story is very inspiring and it's something that people need to hear because it it's it, it like like i said this might be like the second time we've cried on in the field radio and mm-hmm. but but your story i think it, it it will touch people and it will inspire people and that's important you need to hear those stories because that a lot of negativity gets highlighted in the media right right and like you know that's that's one of the reasons why i love music and i just love being an artist because you can you can touch people that you probably can't even see and without you even knowing you can touch people and that's what i really love about it because to me when i die i want to li- i want to live a legacy I can't bear. I can't be in a coffin with all my money and all my jewelry. That shit don't matter. It's about the lives you touch on earth before you go, and that's what my, that's what I seen that my my mother did. So I'm trying to just do the same thing. That's why I said she has a big, like, holding inspiration on me. That's so beautiful. I love that. I really do. I, and I appreciate you for coming on the show and talking about it because I'm sure that's not the easiest subject to broach. Nah, yeah, it's not something that I usually talk about like that. But as I said, like, I want people to know the ins and outs of me, good or bad. Like, I'm an open book. I, I don't hold back anything. Well, where can our listeners find you? Um, They can find me at JSwitches on all, on all platforms at J-A-Y-S-W-I-I-S-H-E-S on Instagram and any other social media platform. All right. And so I want to recap for the listeners. You got the single dropping tomorrow with Cranium and Liravelli. For sure. You got I'm Him is already out. You're dropping right. next week. And then they can find you yeah. again at the top of the year. Definitely. Definitely. And you got interviews everywhere. Everywhere. And there's more and there's more on the way. Man, I feel great that y'all have me. Like I'm really I'm honored to even be on your on your platform. It's really dope. Yo, it's your boy Jay Swishes, Mr. Put It On Himself. And I'm locked in an in the field radio with Lady D and E Boogie. We outside. Let's get it. Welcome back to In the Field Radio. I'm Aaron Boogie. I'm here with Miss Lady D. What's going on? 
Yo, so oh, didn't you like also go to the um Hot 97 Who's Next? Like the real one, not the fake Instagram account ones? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was not the DM that you get in your message. Um, funk, in a, funk Flex. Message. The, the, yeah. the fake <laughs> funk. First of all, Funk Flex was not there. But you know what's funny? Out of every event that I go to, you know who is there? Drewski. And the fact that he does the Roach of the Week clip for us. Amazing. Oh, we love that. We gotta break. <laughs> What's the last time we did the Roach of the Week, bro? There's a cockroach right there. <gasps> There's a roach. Yeah. It's Roachy. Actually, you know what? We could just give Roach of the Week to Tim McQueen right here. Okay. Right now, Yo, so. Roach of the Century. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to get into it because I, I don't even want to go there. I don't if you know, you know. Either, like, but... if you're literally <laughs> yeah. part of the Chamber of Commerce or, like, do, you know. <laughs> Needs no explanation. I, I can't. <laughs> Tim McQueen, so... Roach of the everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Roach of the Millennium. So. I went to the Hot 97 Who's Next showcase. And one of the thing things that we like to do on the show is uplift females. And Armani White performed, which he has that that Billie Eilish TikTok song that's like super viral. And this mm -hmm. other artist, Suave, performed. New York's own Young Devin was in the building and she killed her set. She had that whole room jumping. And I don't know if it was just like hometown love, like she was in the city and everyone was feeling it but she did her thing and i just want to commend her on that uh you know we've had a chance to speak with her she's another super uplifting individual and she's killing it and i think she needs way more flowers than she's been given yeah like everybody's saying her name i don't know does she have like a lot of shows i feel like i want to see her in more shows like i feel like we need the opportunity to like pop out more i don't think that i've seen her around too much but that was one of the reasons I really wanted to get down there. It ended up being, it was like one of those like feel good nights. I ran into D Weathers. He was down there doing his thing. And um, it was just such a dope event and a, and a cool night. And, you know, sometimes with those Who's Next showcases, it, it can, I'm going to say it, it can be a little corny sometimes. And, you know, like the vibes necessarily aren't there. And like, or if there's too many artists, but this was like perfect. There was like three artists. They all did their thing. Um, it was just, it was just one of those, like that, one of those nights that came together in a perfect way. That's awesome. Are you doing and anything we, cool for the holidays? Yes, actually. <laughs> On December 3rd, uh, Kelly Rose is going to be performing at the Winter Wonderland Parade over in Port Ewan. They've never had live music before, so it, it should be a super interesting evening. Um, they've been doing this parade for a really long time, and it's a mitten and coat drive, so it's beneficial outside of just being a really awesome family event. But mm -hmm. they have a parade, and you can sign up to be in the parade. It's not like just organizations or whatever. They have people come through. They have horses and motorcycles and cars and all types of different stuff. Um, and then at the end, Callie Rose is going to do like a 15-minute set of Christmas covers and um she's gonna do the countdown for the tree lighting so it should be that is so cute is she gonna be yes. on a float or like on a stage like in front of the tree she's gonna be on well it's a flatbed so it's gonna be like a float stage <laughs> because oh but after the parade is over too they have pictures with santa for the kids oh yeah so it's super cool evening i'm really excited <laughs> That's to so just exciting. go do, like, local holiday stuff. Yeah, because they canceled the Poughkeepsie Parade. You know how Poughkeepsie always has the the Christmas Parade? Why is that? I don't know. But I, I know because my cousin was on one of the floats in the parade, and I asked him about it this year, and he was like, oh, no, that's canceled. They're not doing it anymore. And I was devastated. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. I used to take my dog and go watch the fireworks. Well, per Ewan is the wave. Facts. December 3rd. We'll be in the field that night. Hey, boo. It's the Lady D. I need to know how much you care. Follow at In The Field Radio on Instagram and Facebook and anywhere you stream podcasts for raw, unedited content from me and E Boogie. Or you could tell me how much you care. Send an email to info at in the field radio .com. I want to know what's on your mind.